Hello, I'm Dr. Peter Luke. What I will be talking about today is reporting requirements. When patient confidentiality must be breached, when we must report certain things that we come across. I will also touch upon what are the circumstances in which we can breach patient confidentiality. So there's a must and then there's a can. Okay. What will I be uh, talking about? Well, uh, the key points are this. Uh, require, reporting requirements are contrary to the principle of patient confidentiality. Confidentiality, as we all know, is a cornerstone of the doctor or healthcare practitioner patient relationship. It is essential for the trust necessary to this relationship. However, Confidentiality sometimes must be breached and in other circumstances can be breached. And the must usually is where public interest, greater public interest supersede the public interest to respect individual autonomy. We all must be aware, must know when reporting is mandatory. Here are some examples. Section 19, Misuse of Drugs Regulations, the Vulnerable Adults Act, Workplace Safety and Health Regulations. Then reportable offences uh, under Section 424 of the Criminal Procedure Code, Infectious Diseases Act. These all have provisions which make reporting mandatory or there is the power of certain people to access the patient records. Okay, so what a Section 19 Misuse of Drugs Regulation says uh, in terms of treatment of drug addicts. Bear in mind, this particular provision, it talks about the medical practitioner, so only medical pr practitioner, not other healthcare practitioners, not uh, uh, the public at large. So when a medical practitioner who attends to a person whom he considers or has reasonable grounds to suspect as a drug addict shall within seven days from the date of attendance furnish to both Director of Medical Services and the Director of Central Narcotics Bureau the following information. So there's all that information there that we have to furnish. And the grounds are also laid out in the regulations. So the grounds may include, it's not when, when the word may include is used, it's not all-encompassing, so there can be other grounds, but they may include frequency and dates, the medical practitioner or any other medical practitioner working in the same hospital as him has attended to the person, the physical symptoms of the person, the amount and types of prescriptions require, requested by or provided to the person. So sometimes we get folk who come in and uh, they keep asking, for example, for cough syrup every week. Say, I, I'm having cough, I need a big bottle or two big bottles, three big bottles. That would constitute grounds for suspicion. And it would be certainly an, a context in which we will want to be reporting that person. The Vulnerable Adults Act, the provision there, the director general or a protector may at all reasonable times examine and take copies of any health record kept by any person in subsection 1. So far as the record relates to an individual whom the director general or protector has reason to believe is a vulnerable adult and has experienced or is experiencing or at risk of abuse, neglect, or self-neglect, or the record relates to a vulnerable adult whom the Director General or Protector has reason to believe has experienced or is experiencing or at risk of abuse, neglect, or self-neglect. Workplace Safety and Health Medical Examinations Regulations it shall be the duty of the designated workplace doctor to report the results of the medical examination 
of a person employed in any hazardous occupation in a workplace to the responsible person of that person. The responsible person of a person employed in any hazardous occupation shall keep the report of any medical, every medical examination of that person employed in a hazardous occupation for a period of at least five years from the date of the medical examination and whenever required by the commissioner within the period referred to, make available to the commissioner the report or a summary of the report as the commissioner may specify. So these provisions were in the Vulnerable Adults Act, Workplace Safety and Health Regulations, they have a specific provisions which enable uh, uh, specific people to access information in relation to a patient or the, as in this workplace safety and health regulations, uh, the person has to go to a designated workplace doctor and the medical examination is submitted. So these are examples of where there is the provision for mandatory access to a patient's information. Now we'll come to the first case scenario. Uh, hypothetically, you're a counsellor. A 15-year-old girl you are giving counselling to confides in you that she has a regular sexual partner for over two years who is a 23-year-old. She has recently missed a period and asked for advice how she would get rid of any pregnancy. You have only recently gained her trust after six months of trying to make a breakthrough. She reminds you to please not tell anyone. Maybe I'll pause for a short while now. Uh, let everyone reflect. What would you do? Or more pertinently, what would you have to do if you came across this sort of situation? Okay, uh, the answer. You have to refer to the Criminal Procedure Code Section 424. What does it say? The duty to give information of certain matters. And bear in mind, this provision talks about every person. So it's not just medical practitioner, not just healthcare practitioner, but every person aware of the commission of or the intention of any other person to commit any arrestable offence. So there's this whole list of them punishable under chapters 6, 7, 8, 9, 11 of the Penal Code or any of the following sections of the Penal So there's a whole load of provisions. Shall in the absence of reasonable excuse, the burden of proving which shall lie upon the person so aware, immediately give information to the, to the officer in charge of the nearest police station or to a police officer of the commission or intention. This provision is pretty clear. When we come across any situation where we know there has been a commission of or intention to commit an arrestable offence, we have to, and you see the word, immediately give the information to the police officer in charge or the nearest police station or to a police officer unless we have reasonable excuse, but the burden of proving this reasonable excuse lies on the person who chooses not to provide the information. So as a rule, we should be giving the information, we should be uh, reporting. And this is an example, a clear example of mandatory reporting. So examples of arrestable offences I already uh, uh, talked about earlier in the previous slide. Then uh, you see that first scheduled CPC offences under section 376A are arrestable offences. That means may arrest without a warrant. And in this particular example, this is a minor under 16 and is covered by section 376A penal code. Any person who penetrates penis, vagina, anus or mouth, as the case may be, 
of a person under 16 years of age, with or without the consent, shall be guilty of an offence. So in this context, the counsellor has been made aware of an arrestable offence. And unless there is reasonable excuse, the reminder, the burden of proof is on the counsellor. Otherwise, the counsellor has to immediately report. And uh, if you look back at the case scenario, the intercourse started even before this girl was reached 14 years old. So it's not just uh, below 16, which is sexual assault by penetration. It is statutory rape if it's below 14 years old, even more serious. Okay, so these are all examples of um, arrestable offences. This is a whole list down here which you can refer to. Uh, the list goes on.